The Young and the Restless, Y&R, Revelation shows that Nick Newman is worried about his daughter Summer Newman, and wants to ensure that Kyle Abbott will be invested this time. Nick remembers when not long ago, Kyle abandoned Summer to marry Lola Rosales, marry her and leave Summer destroyed. Nick threw this at Kyle to see how he reacted, and it's also the tiring act we've heard a million times. Summer is his destiny, and he always has to be with her, blah blah blah. However, we did see how Kyle was around Lola, and he definitely still has a bit of emotion there. Will he be able to overcome that? Nick wanted to know if that was the past, and although Kyle did the right words, I personally don't think he believes it. Nick asked Kyle, is everything over? Between him and Lola and if he is trying to convince Nick, or himself. It really felt like he was trying to convince himself. Oh, and what the hell made the divorce between him and Lola so long? It felt like it had happened forever. Either way, I think Kyle is on track to hurt Summer. Again. His actions, his selfish manners, all converge, and once again, Summer will be the one to get hurt. Kyle didn't know what he wanted, but he repeated the same things to himself to try to convince himself to believe it. I think the conversation with Nick is only making things worse and he will soon do something bad. Adam didn't know if he would be happy to be reminded of what he did every time he looked Victor in the eye. Chelsea suggested they should start over somewhere else, like in Paris. Adam recalled that Paris wasn't a good fit for them or for Connor, and he didn't think running away was the answer. Chelsea grumbled that Adam would do what he wanted to do, no matter what she said. Adam declares that she is his future in his heart, so if she didn't want him to pursue Sharon therapy, he wouldn't. Then, Phyllis walked out of the bathroom in a robe and spat out that the hot tub had dissolved her tension. Nick wants her to rest and relax for what's next, and he tells her to check her phone. She discovered a message linking to a video game with a paleontological theme. Phyllis wondered if the game would include an Easter egg to unlock Abby's ability to stop building a hotel. There's only one way to find out, commented Nick. Nick and Phyllis happily played as they dueled in video games. She protested when he achieved his seemingly impossible goal, and she accused him of playing the game before. Nick thinks he'll have to try it out to make sure it works on her perfect day. Phyllis pledged to erase the smug on her face, and she claimed victory by winning. Phyllis couldn't believe Nick spoke to the chef to add chili to her chicken, and he asked how desserts were. She replies that it's better than sex, quickly adding, for someone else. She confirmed that he helped prove that her idea of running a perfect fantasy movie was valid. Phyllis planned to start the Grand Phoenix Escape Club just for women, so every woman could feel like she did at the time. Phyllis thinks she has the resources to tailor each experience to each woman, and she predicts that people will pay a lot of money for that. Nick likes to look at her passionately and confidently, because it's sexy like hell. She thanked him for his help with this concept. He offers to help whenever he can make her feel that way. At the little house, Ray asked if Adam would upset Sharon, and she replied that it was a heavy talk. Ray reveals that he knows Nick told Adam about her cancer, and he's limping that Adam is back there again. Sharon explains that she invited Adam over because he just knew about a traumatic childhood experience he couldn't remember. Ray guessed that Adam wanted her to help him get through it, and he said that Adam was a black hole of selfishness because he considered his own problems to take precedence over Sharon's health. Ray realized from Sharon's silence that she had told Adam she would help. Ray realized it was Sharon's natural instinct to help, but he argued that there were other therapists. Sharon replies that Adam is a very private person and that he would be too careful when opening up to a stranger. She added that she would introduce Adam to someone else if he just wanted to improve himself, but she couldn't share details about his situation. Ray surmised that Adam had convinced her that she was the only one who could help. Sharon thinks she's in a unique position to help Adam. Ray is worried that Sharon is still recovering from surgery and is waiting for radiation therapy. He assumed that if Adam were truly her friend, Adam would know she had to devote herself to her fight. Sharon continued that Adam had offered to stop working together if it hindered her recovery. She vowed not to endanger her health because she knew what she had to lose. Ray was concerned that Adam would use her generosity against her and she would let Adam put his needs above hers. Sharon feels fortunate that Ray cares for her, and she understands his hesitation after she has allowed their relationship with Adam in the past. It wasn't a jealous conversation, Ray insisted, and he didn't think romance was going on. Sharon sympathized that Adam didn't get back to her easily and he did it out of pain, not out of selfishness. Ray worries more about her pain than Adam, and he pledges to stay loyal to her because he loves her. Sharon urged him to show that by trusting she would protect herself. Sharon insists that being a therapist is part of who she is, like being a mother or a business owner. 
Ray understands that helping Adam can take her out of her own head and the mystery she faces during her treatment, and he knows that she gets the satisfaction of being help. Everybody. Sharon loves Ray for listening and really listening to her, even if it's not easy. He admits that he had knee reactions, but he's trying to see things from her point of view. He hoped that she would see them from him, too, since Adam wasn't a random person coming to her for help. Ray warns that Adam doesn't care about the limits or boundaries of others and he makes sure that Adam doesn't take into account the price Sharon will incur. Ray encouraged Sharon to think about the sacrifice she would make and asked herself if it was worth it. Sharon says she has weighed the pros and cons, and she knows how to avoid pitfalls in the face of Adam's narcissistic tendencies. She emphasized that it was a professional endeavor and she would begin to understand Adam's mentality that other therapists wouldn't have. Ray promises not to fight Sharon for whatever she decides. Sharon likes that she can talk to Ray about anything, and she loves who he is and how he believes in her. Ray predicts that unearthing Adam's memories will be hard for her, too, and he reminds her to rely on him if she needs someone to talk to. She promised that she would. In the penthouse, Chelsea was stunned when Adam informed her that he wanted to work with Sharon to restore his memories. Chelsea said she gave all of her heart to him and asked him to trust they would get through together, but he turned to Sharon. He insisted that he needed help, and Chelsea responded, There is only the kind of help that Sharon can give you. Adam pointed out that Sharon is a professional player, but Chelsea thinks more experienced professionals are needed. Chelsea doubted that was the only reason why he turned to Sharon. Adam reasoned that it would take more work to discover his memory with a random stranger, while Sharon already knew his history. Chelsea was furious, implying that Sharon always understood him better than anyone else. Adam insisted that he was comfortable with Sharon, and that he needed to delve into his darkest thoughts and fears in order to remember what had happened. Chelsea questioned why he was walking behind her to seek Sharon's help. Adam points out that Sharon may not be willing to consider it and he doesn't want to mention it to Chelsea unless it's a possibility. Chelsea realized that Sharon had agreed to help, and she said Sharon was ready to rush in to save the day again. Chelsea complained that Adam needed Sharon, and Sharon liked being needed. She was sure that would be a mistake. Adam insisted he only needed Chelsea, because she was the mother of his son and the woman he loved. He went on that Sharon had found happiness with Ray, but Chelsea noted that Sharon's relationship with Adam was the reason Sharon and Ray broke up recently. Adam revealed that Sharon refused to consider working with him unless things went wrong. Chelsea assumed Adam wouldn't tell her about it if Sharon didn't insist. Actress Eileen Davidson is open to her dedicated charity projects. Speaking to Soap Opera Digest in a new interview, the beautiful blonde actress said that if there was a charity close to her heart, it would be No Kid Hungry and Project Angel Food. When asked why it was important to her to use celebrities to help her charitable activities, Eileen told the publication, I have a few answers to that. First of all, I feel very grateful for everything I have accomplished in business and have been given away in life in general. If I have any kind of background, I want to reuse it. Also, my mother gave it to me since I was very young to repay my credit. I grew up in the Catholic Church and we always raise money for orphans. My parents were brought up during a downturn so we were taught to be grateful for what we have and not to take anything for granted. My mother always urged me to help the less fortunate. She also said that between No Kid Hungry and Project Angel Food, she has been with No Kid Hungry the longest. She explained, No Kid Hungry appeared because all over this country, there are kids who are not given food. It's shocking that this is happening and is very common. Eileen continued, I have a lot of clothes that I wore during the shows and on the red carpet that I sold. The proceeds are not just for No Kid Hungry, but whatever is sold, I will donate. Chelsea testified that she understood nothing but that she found out that Adam killed AJ but Adam reminded her that she pushed him to accept it and continued not to be an option. He vowed to try to do the best for their family, and he had to learn well to be the best husband and father possible. Adam recalled that Chelsea had believed in Sharon's skill and patience with Connor, but Chelsea denied that the situation was completely different. Adam believes Sharon is the best chance for him to tell the truth and he hopes Chelsea can support him. Chelsea claims that Victor made it clear that Adam was protecting his mother when he accidentally killed AJ. Adam argued that they weren't sure since they only had Victor's word. Chelsea was certain that Adam hadn't intentionally murdered anyone because she understood him better than anyone, even Sharon. Chelsea is adamant that he doesn't need to find his memories back in order to be a better father or husband. She realized that he thought tribute would bring him peace, but she feared it would do the opposite. Chelsea understands that Adam is in a vulnerable situation and she wishes Hope is still alive so they have someone they can trust to confirm what happened. Adam complained that he would do anything to just have a few minutes with his mother to ask her why she was hiding from him. 
Chelsea was certain that his mother wanted him to be free to live his life without any guilt because he had nothing to feel guilty about. Chelsea begged Adam to stay the way Hope arranged to make him happy. What do you think? Are you excited for the new episodes of Young Master and Restless? Let us know in the comments below. Return to Y&R for all the latest news, updates and savings on the Young and the Restless. Don't forget to head back to TV Overmind for all the breaking news on all your favorite daytime TV shows.